imagine a six-year-old child nervously walking for this parent to the CTM. This is this an occasion for his teacher to tell all that is wrong with this child. How he often to sit in class and listen, just to write on his books, finish restlessly, and doesn't even make eye contact while listening to him. This saga and this okay goes on forever long. From one teacher to another, one PTM to another, continuing year after year. Yet, these teachers are often shocked and perplexed when they see how they manage to force them to the grade without even seemingly being able to focus in class. This makes them put them in the spectrum of either being exponentially unintelligent or really smart. But they don't want him to be like this. They want him to fit in. They want him to be normal. And that shows us the definition of normality. We shouldn't fit in to make everybody normal. This shows the deep issue in our society for each individual to fit in and to be a normal person. Each one of us has a different fingerprint, and we accept that. We all think that each one of us has a different fingerprint, and if you see one of identification tell one person apart from the other, you say you have a different fingerprint, you use a hotel looking and whatnot. But our learning styles are also like that. Each one of us has a different learning style, learning process, learning attitude, and learning ability. That differ from each person. The person over there has a different learning style from the person over there, and so on. That's why I think that each one of us should be treated as a different individual. Let me tell you a story from when I was a child. For me, focusing on tasks that I didn't like or didn't interest me was a mission impossible. It was almost like this. Exactly, a mission impossible. Not possible for me to do the things that I really like. But what if I told you it would be possible to see every impossible thing using the power of creativity? Would you believe me? Well, my mother did, and that's why she decided it was best to shift me from the conventional mold to a non-conventional schooling system to fit all of my needs. For this decision, she faced immense ridicule in her own life. Friends, associates, and even family members told her she was out of her mind. This was a wrong decision. Every child faces the same thing, let you regret this decision. And as for the regretting part, I can tell you, it is not a regret this decision at all. It was often very hard for her. Imagine building a sand castle only to have it fall just so you can build one again. But my mother never listened to anybody else. She listened to her own heart, and her heart told her it was time to change. So she left her city, her country, her state, and her family, all for what? For the holistic development of her child. She realized it would be best for him, and the decision paid off in the long run. But as for the starting part, my mother faced a lot of struggle. She had to do household chores in the morning, like all mothers, but she also had to do something, researching and seeing ways in which I could focus and feel more included in the classroom mold. But even though we went to the USA, the complaints and struggles still continued. Teachers often told me that I was not concentrating in class, that I was often too, uh, you know, restless, fidgeting, and not making eye contact. But often through these discoveries, I discovered something that would forever shape my life. I discovered colored books, flashcards, great pops, and other websites. Reading made me joy, and it transported me to another world. In fact, you probably wouldn't believe me if I told you. When I was a kid in fifth grade, we had this standardized test called the MPS. It happens once a year, and it's a three-hour exam. So one time, this kid asked the teacher, what happens if you finish early? The teacher told him, you can read a book. And that sparked my imagination. So I finished the 30 hour paper in 30 minutes just so I can spend two and a half hours reading notes. Now you can probably imagine what I did in that three hours, 30 minutes because it was not a very good score. The second thing that I discovered were Legos. There were these small colored blocks that you can see. They increased my focus and attention span by at least a pound. Imagine a five-year-old, six-year-old who never sits for more than two minutes now building five hours of Lego a day without taking breaks and without even stopping to eat food. This was a shock to everybody. The only person who wasn't shocked though was my mom. She knew that I could do this. She only became more hopeful after discovering this and knew that I could become the best version of myself. And the third and most profound thing I discovered was technology. I made technological projects the whole day, both reading and the Legos taught me a lot of technology, taught me a lot of things that I would never even dream of. Like if you look here, for instance, 
instance, that's the play button I made out of an apple. Whenever you press the apple, it will play your YouTube video for you, and whenever you press the apple, it will pause the YouTube video. And then the next thing is a GPS machine. Basically, whenever you touch, it will give you the full description of the machine, whatever the thing was, what state the thing was from, and where they were standing in the NFL currently. Next to that is a shop machine. This was a game I made for fun. So basically, it was using a transformer and a battery. So whenever you touch the two holes, you get a immense shock, and that would put you back. Now the next thing is a computer. Yeah, that's a computer I made by myself in third grade. And besides that, it's just a normal charger, except the fact that it's portable and can be used at all times. I had a lot of joy while learning various technologies that really helped me. Like the effects editing, flamethrowers, in fact, that red hair is my mom's old laptop that I tore apart. Yes, so I can see the components inside. This is my very own PC. Besides that, it's a Bluetooth speaker I made. And I think a lot of you already know what that is. Yeah, that's a gas stove. I used a gas stove capacitor and two dead mosquito rockets I had and turned into a lightning discharge rod. I'll give lightning rods this big. Technology, I discovered my purpose for helping society. It gave me immense joy, fulfillment, and happiness I write this technology to help people in the world. But you see, this is not just my story alone. This is a story of millions of other neurodiverse kids that face the same things every single second and are tortured by society in the old factory model of education. Our old factory model was made when John T. Rockefeller had a problem. He needed a lot of workers. The only way to make workers at that time was to skill them. And that's why he decided to make an education system that everyone could see to make employees. But is that the need of today? No! We need people who are in, and employers. We need our problem solvers, critical thinkers, and persons with problem solving skills. And that's why I think it's high time we need to accept and save your diversity. We often talk about gender diversity, racial diversity, flora and fauna diversity. But what about neurodiversity? I agree. All these are equally as important to each other. But I think neurodiversity is almost as important as this. It's a highly unspoken topic. Look at this photo right here. Read what's written. It says, for a fair selection, it's a process, everybody has to take the exam. Please find the truth. There, and this one is expression. Why do you think it's so? Now look at the elephant and the rhinoceros. Why do you think their expression is so? I think you can understand now. Can you relate this to your own life? Yes. It's the judgment we face from society based on one or two parameters gives us an idea of who we are. Only a lot of neurodiverse kids face this. They're often labeled as dumb, people who are not smart, and a lot of things only based on one or two parameters. We should not do this. Judgmental somebody is not a good idea. And often, neurodiverse kids are not the best at the things which normal people are good at. Take a look at this thing that I now, I think we should celebrate neurodiversity make sure that no child is left behind. Each one of us should either use the conventional model, which is writing on pen and paper, or if we're not able to do that, we should use technology to celebrate neurodiversity. I want to tell you all to save neurodiversity using AI technology. I'm pretty sure a lot of you may have heard about the blue two sigma problem. Basically, it talks about how learning differs from person to person, how each person different and how one of them learning can actually shape a person. It has a variety. The reason it's called a problem is because back then when it was discovered, even today, it was not practical to give every single person one teacher to themselves. It's not even practical today. But today, we have something that can save us and save each child and give each one their personal education plan. Using the technology, we can give one-to-one -one training to all students, no matter what they're good, their life. Friends, no weaknesses. I want you all to imagine a classroom where AI-powered learning enables kids to learn things they can never have even thought of, where AI-powered learning helps learn from their life. Imagine a classroom where each person is learning different things based on what they want, not what the curriculum is, but based on what they want. This is something that is entirely possible using AI for neurodiversity. Neurodiverse kids often face these same problems. And that's why they're often labeled as part of this. In fact, as you can probably see here, there's three things you can take over on top. Instead of defining normality, 
Let's embrace neurodiversity. Instead of labeling judgment, let's soak in adventure. And instead of having the urge to fit in, let's have the courage to stand out. A great man once said, if you don't fit in, then you're a porn to stand out. Thank you.